everybody. Welcome to the original Intersex Connect Live. Thanks so much for joining us. We're only like a minute late. My computer kicked me out like two minutes before the show started. So I apologize for my tardiness. I'm usually not late. Anyway, I'm Joseph Benedict. I'm your host for today. And we have an awesome guest to, coming up today. But before we get to our guest, um, there is an issue that I would like to address. Um, because words are important. And I've been getting some backlash. I don't know. I don't want to make it seem that hard. But some people are wondering about the words that I've chosen when I'm speaking about intersex and things of that nature. Um, I want everybody to understand that I only got into being an intersex advocate for one reason and one reason only. And that reason is to hopefully prevent a child receiving the same surgery I did, which was cosmetic, because their parents are afraid of how society is going to treat their child and they don't see an alternative to um, doing surgery. They are trying to do what's best for the child because society won't accept their child the way they are. So I am trying to prevent another child from having surgery by A, normalizing intersex around the world. But I also have to reach the parents. And to reach those parents, I have to use words like normalization, surgery, and DSD. And I hate those words as much as anybody else in the intersex community. But the day that the pediatric surgeon walks in and says, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, will you please sign this piece of paper so that we can start the infant genital mutilization on your child, that would be great. I have to use the words that these parents are going to look up. They're going to look up normalization surgery and they're going to look up DSD. And if one of them sees something that I put on there and they say, hold it, wait, I don't want to do this surgery right now. I want to let my child decide. Then it's all been worthwhile. So I'm sorry I use words that people don't like, but my real audience is the parents that just found out they have an intersex child and they don't know what to do and they have no idea because the doctors will not use the word intersex and they use words like normalization, surgery, and um, disorder of sexual development to scare the parents into doing the surgery because your child is not normal. Oh my God, tell me that didn't just happen. Oh. There we are. That disappeared for a second there. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so I'll get off my soapbox and we're going to bring on today's guest, Vicki Wassel. And Vicki is an amazing person. I've talked about Intersex Island before. Um, intersex Island is the time that you spend knowing that you're intersex, but before you find out that there's other intersex people and you feel like you're the only one. I was on Intersex Island for about five years and Vicki was the person whose name came up and was like me and made me realize that I was not alone. But on top of that, Vicki Boisseau is the New England director of the Intersex Campaign for Equality. Studied at London's Regent University, has a Bachelor of Science from Pittsburgh State University, and is the founder and director at the Intersex Friends and Family, and a Patriots fan. But we're gonna forgive that <laughs> and if we can bring Vicky in, then we will not talk football. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, Vicky. Welcome to the show. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Um, just want to get started right away. The same question I ask everybody I ask when I bring them on the shows. Um, are you or are you not intersex? Yes, I am. And what is your intersex variation? Um, I get a twofer. One, oh. I start out with partial androgen insensitivity, uh -huh. which means, you know, roughly about 80% of my body is non-reactive to androgens. Right. Mainly, mainly testosterone. Okay. But since I am smack in the middle between men and women, uh -huh. is my uh -huh. variation. Uh, I also have the hypoxpadius. 
Right. Which means the pee hole is not quite at the tip, but somewhere down the side of it. Yeah. And mine was just that. a bit below the head. All right. So, lovely. You got a twofer on that one. Um, all right. So, when somebody's met an intersex person, I truly believe that if you've met one intersex person, you've met one intersex person. So, can you kind of explain to us um, what your variation has meant to you, um, not only physically, but like emotionally growing up and, and how, I don't know, because it kind of made me bitter. And I don't know if you're bitter or not about the whole thing. So how, how did you either become or not become bitter about the whole situation over the years? Because you seem to have known for most of your life. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what has it been like for you? Um, well, they start off with me as, yeah, when I came out of the shoot, I came right out of the closet pretty much, right to my parents. <laughs> like, oh, you're intersex. That's good. Uh, the That's the good. original doctor got it right. They put X on my birth certificate because I wasn't quite male or female, which is quite true. And they start off by calling me Victoria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, when they're eight months old, they decide to, um, you don't have a girl. You seem to have a boy. So let's try to repair this um, phallus and make it, you know, look normal. To normalize me. You were how old when they did that? About first one was eight months old. All right. So they waited eight months and... About knew her. that they could have waited longer, but they went ahead and took care of it because the doctor said so, apparently. Pretty much, yeah. It's a doctor's idea. At that point back then, they didn't need informed consent. They just needed consent. Mm -hmm. So they tell their parents all these lies that, you know, the child will be normal. They won't be able to grow up and they'll be stigmatized. So we have to normalize the kids. Yeah. To make them conform to what is believed to be male or female, be boys or girls. Horrifying. It is, yeah. I'm sure you can understand that. Yes. I'm going to yourself. So well, growing up and, and going to school early on, did you have an awareness of all of this or was it something that didn't come up until like high school? Now it's time to say that you had 13 surgeries. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as a kid, I had like 13, 13 surgeries to correct the damage that was done by the first one. Yeah, I had a bunch myself. My last one was when I was 14 and only because I refused to have any more, not because they got it right. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, well, they raised me a boy. Or they raised me as, I did, as, as if I was a boy. Right. Uh, got me to school. Um, of course, my my first grade in school, I only attended 80 days out of 180. Nice. That's a lot of times. I, yeah, because of surgery, recovering from surgeries, uh, being in the hospital for weeks at a time. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I had to do that. Friendly. And also, I was a lot smaller than any of the other boys or girls of my age. Of course you were after having surgery at eight months old. That's got to like retard everything in your body and slow everything down, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And since I can't respond to testosterone, I was a lot shorter. Also, as you see, I have very tiny hands. Mm -hmm. Smaller than anybody else of my height. Right. I got real tiny feet. Um, I took a men's size five shoe. Which would be uh, equivalent to like a six and a half women's. Yeah. Are they as hard to find as women's 11? Oh. <laughs> yeah. There is no men's body shoes around. No. Yeah. <laughs> they start at seven and go up. Well. Um, it also affects me, as you see, I got well, no body here. I get zero. Right. Yeah, yeah. I get nothing. Um, of course, I got the breast. 
they started on the on testosterone when I was like uh, 13. And well, since most of my body ignored it, it changed it to estrogen. Right. You need testosterone to make estrogen in your body. So the estrogen took effect and got me boobs and me breasts. That's kind of funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, but not, but not. I mean, if, if it was me, it'd be like the irony. <laughs> they're sitting there giving me testosterone. Now look what happens, you fools. Oh. <laughs> so I bet that made school difficult, though, didn't it? It, it did, yeah. I got beaten up a bunch because I didn't look like any of the other boys. I was small. I couldn't run as fast or, you know, I couldn't do any chin ups or anything, you know. And when I hit the sixth grade, uh, middle school, uh, they had me take gym and well, I developed <laughs> a bit. Yeah. That was awkward. It was very awkward. Yes. Especially a change in the locker room into your gym clothes, right? Yeah. Especially with the um, skins against the shirts. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, and they may be um, oh, your skin. <laughs> lovely. Yes. I said, no, I cannot do this. <laughs> mm. You know, I play, yes, but you no, know, I have to get my shirt on. He, the oh, MP3 yeah. insisted on it, and well, I say, well, if I do this, you're going to lose your job. Yes. One of those situations where if you took off your top, you'd get arrested because you took it, but they'd put you in the men's jail, yes? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> I took it off, and it's like everyone saw my boobs, and I put it back on again, and yeah. They so did... saw why I couldn't take it off. <laughs> So were they able to make accommodations or did they just continually embarrass you? Uh, yeah. From then on, I didn't have to take any gym. No. My doctor sent a note to, uh, to the gym teacher to the school stating mm -hmm. I had testicular feminization as a reason for me not taking gym. All right. Not sure what that is, but if it sold it to the gym teacher, there you go. Wow. Uh, actually, it's the old name for androgen insensitivity. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. That, that and means... of course, I went, you know, I went through school without, uh, you know, I tried to hide my boobs and I wore big sweaters to cover everything, you know, sweatshirts, that kind of thing. Right. And yeah, I was kind of bullied in school, but I made it. No. Yeah. I said, bye. Right. So just to keep the, the show rolling and stuff, um, we uh, are aware and sold the show on the fact that you are the co-founder of Intersex Awareness Day. And so I want to talk to you about it, that. And we actually have a special guest that we had not planned on, but we actually have the other co-founder of Intersex Awareness Day with us. And their name is Jay and I, Sorry, I didn't write down your last name, Jay. Anyway, um, if Vaj could bring Jay up for me. Jay Rains. Hi, Jay. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Very good. How are you? I'm right. doing pretty good. Great. So if we take a minute, um, I want to ask Vicky first. Um, how in the heck did you come up with Intersex Awareness Day and make it? actually happen well years ago i was on this yahoo group um now they had different yahoo groups for different things i was on an inter, kind of an intersex one and i got this note saying you know i need some help with my daughter can you help me i'm like sure i can help you you know i got it on and um i started emailing with jay myself uh, the emails turned into phone calls. Phone calls turned into, I need you out here. <laughs> right. So Jay um, got in contact with the school that she was work he was working at. Sorry. And, well, we just started to go from there. All right. So, Jay, you started at, the, at, a, at, at a school, is that right? Or... 
Um, yeah, I was at, going to school at the University of Montana here in Missoula at mm -hmm. the time and was a member of Lambda Alliance here. Uh -huh. And I, you talk about inter, an intersex island. Uh, you think the rest of the world's bad come to, to little town Montana where most people had never ever heard the term intersex. Most people had never heard the term hermaphrodite. No. And um, I personally am not intersex. I am transgender, but I have an intersex. I say child, although she's 42. <laughs> yeah. They'll and always be your kid. <laughs> when the Lambda was having pride, there was nothing about intersex in their presenta presentations. And I said, well, knowing how my daughter felt and how I felt, you know, being isolated as a parent all these years, and she would, she was in her 20s by that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, up until a few months earlier, we had never openly known anyone who was intersex until I started the intersex group. And then uh, the head of ISNA, Intersex um, Society of North America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who at that time referred to herself as, as Cheryl Chase came to the university and spoke. We had never met any other openly intersex people and it changed our you know we got off that island and then with the inner with the internet that island became a continent and then two continents and now it, it we're i have the world. friends around the world yeah but at the time um i felt it was very very necessary to have an intersex awareness in the context of the pride that we were doing so i asked vicky to come out and join us and speak right well that's pretty awesome and uh the university was accepting of the idea and everything so that helped a lot yeah <laughs> um, um no i had a mean comment to say about something but i'm not going to go there <laughs> But when this um, was happening, I asked Jay to fill up my calendar. So we did. I talked to uh, a nurses program in town. Mm -hmm. I talked to a couple of professors in town. I talked to a SCA group there, which were both were SCA members at the time. Right. I talked to there's like two or three other ones that I that we went to. So it's not just in the um, it's not just like a one day thing or the whole week. Right. Um, events that we had planned out yeah that's awesome you're kind of like me you'll talk any chance you get and try and get <laughs> people to listen and if one person out of the whole room listens then winner uh, <laughs> so i love your attitude on that but i mean okay so you started the intersex awareness day in missoula at the university and it was like a week long event um but how do you get to catch on worldwide? Because I can't get anything to catch on worldwide. And it literally is a worldwide thing. And people in countries all around the world are celebrating Intersex Awareness Day. Or celebrating is probably not the right word, but they're acknowledging Intersex Awareness Day all around the world. How in the world do you do that? Uh, well, people. of course, you know, when I start talking, I'm like, hey, I'm coming to Missoula. I'm doing this thing. I'm doing the insect awareness. Come, you know, come on, you know, you meet me and see me. Um, you know, we can talk about this. And, you know, a lot of people said, well, I'm in Texas. I can't come all the way up there. So what can I do? So I tell them how me and Jay got this started. You know. Right. By you know, working this, by talking to people, by you know, getting these events to say, hey, you know, we are here. 
think globally, yeah. act locally, yeah. kind of a, a think globally, act locally type attitude. Yeah, and we just started um, internet groups in in Yahoo groups. I mean, that was the mm -hmm. fir first platform that that would let us do groups and just connect, connect, connect with people and word of mouth because that's, you know, the intersex community was hidden all these years before this. And um, I started an inter uh, intersex parents group and it was the first one that anybody started and just connecting with parents saying, hey, we're here. We need, we know you need support because when uh, my daughter was diagnosed, um, I was told that I couldn't talk to other parents. They wouldn't connect me with other parents. And then the internet changed all that. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, because I've talked to the Society of Pediatric Urology on multiple occasions, and they're like the only people advocating for these surgeries, but they have lots of money. Um, and they're like, yeah, we need somebody to come and talk to the parents and help walk them through it. And it's like, I'd be happy to. And they're, well, not you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you got anybody else? So I don't, I still am not allowed to talk to the parents before they do surgery. When my daughter was diagnosed, you thought you could trust your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> and that, yeah. that's not all. And the information that I got was not um, all true. She had, she had, they told me she had to have a gonadectomy. She had a fetal, she was XY and she had a fetal mass of gonads. And they insisted I had to take those gonads out. Because she's going to get cancer, right? Because she's going to get cancer, yes. Yeah, um, that one. You know, the doctors were the experts. What did I know? That one. You know. Um, I apologize to my daughter and to every other intersex person that's ever had to have unnecessary surgery. Yes, you didn't have enough information, did you? Which is why yes, we so. do what we do, so that people will have more information. Anyway, got to keep the show on schedule. So, Jay, we're going to go on to the next subject. I thank you so much for everything you've done for Intersex Awareness Day and Intersex Awareness Period. And I'm going to let you go drink coffee in the back room. <laughs> right. Thank you and, for having me. <laughs> hey, the pleasure is all mine. Thanks for showing up on like short notice because I don't think you were given more than three days notice on this one. <laughs> okay. so, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And so I want to take a moment to in, uh, acknowledge the people. Um, Sheila Ann is here, and Cynthia Jackson Multi is here, and she wrote a very nice compliment to us, and I'm not going to read all because I'm shy. Oh. <laughs> so, all right, but, so, Vicki, we, um, or I, we all should be, but I am impressed with some of the changes that you have um made not just by creating groups and and starting intersex awareness day but you actually worked with the um, patient family advisory council at the university of massachusetts to um come up with a better representation for medical records is that a good explanation or the that might be a really horrible explanation that you did. But if you uh, can explain. Something similar, yes. The hospitals were switching over to their um, to a new computer system for record uh, keeping. Mm -hmm. um, I'm blanking on the name at the moment. Um, but they're still kind of like working through the bugs and still trying to, you know, um, if, you know, get it working, get it going. So they brought me in. And I told him some of the records is like, well, on my medical records, there is a big lie there. Mm. And 
if it's not taken care of, it can actually cost me my life. Yes. Um, I was not just born male or female. I was born with an intersex variation. Yes. And there are medical things hooked up with this med- medical variation. Like uh, without, est- without taking estrogen, I would have osteoporosis. Right. I have to take some estrogen, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, other things, you know, real bone disease. Um, there's still other things that, you know, go along with it, as it were. Right. And they have to, you know, they have to worry about it. If someone says that they are intersex, the next question I put down also is, okay, what variation? That. <laughs> because there are some variations, if not taken care of within the first week of life, uh, they could die. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, like salt wasting, congenital injury, that one. That one. <laughs> there is no that and I will always admit that there are times when surgery is absolutely necessary, but um they're more rare than the cosmetic surgery that is done to normalize children. Yeah. So now uh, on birth certificates you'll see M F X and E the United States. M, F, X, and E? I haven't seen the E yet. There was, when I went out there to meet Jay, there was a woman who came to our second annual Insex Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. And she came up to me, of course, after, after the talk. And she showed me her birth certificate had E on it. Huh. And we're trying to figure out, okay, why E? That. Did you ever figure that out? Uh, finally, I kind of figured out I must mean you, Nick. Oh, yeah, I guess. Why not? Because that's not an accurate description by any means. But anyway. Um. <laughs> not quite, but yeah. That's probably what the doctor was thinking. Hey, this is a you, Nick. I put their E. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Close enough, huh? So, no, I've never seen that one. This is the first time I heard of that. So, anyway, so you were working on the in the computers and... Mm-hmm trying to get them to reflect your true sex as opposed to a binary option. Exactly. And, um, if Vos could bring up, um, you, we have your permission to bring this up. It's oh, yeah, like go ahead. the front page of your medical record. And um, it shows a better way to do it. And I tricked Vosh and put the wrong thing up first, probably. <laughs> Sorry, Vosh. <laughs> but anyway, um, try to explain to me how you made this different than um, all the other ones. I mean, obviously, it's there's male, female, but there was more to it than that, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, for, uh, some of them still have male, female, M to F, or F to M. Right. Which means, for me, none of the above. Right. Exactly. Um, I was born intersex. The doctor had it right. The first one. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't figure out exactly which one. So like, okay, there's not male, there's not a boy, not a boy, not a girl. Intersex. So they didn't have that, that name back then. So they yeah. put down X for kind of like a placeholder kind of a thing. Yeah. Looks like we're having a little trouble bringing up that piece of paper. But um, well, basically it, it just says, uh, so in my medical record is, Sex at birth, X, and then after it intersex. There you go. Yeah. And that should be a viable option, which is much better than male to female, female to male, and or all the other options. Um, it took me years to get transgender off of my medical records. <laughs> and uh, But it finally doesn't say that anymore. Um, and hello to Greg Lee C. Nelson. It's very nice to see you. Thank you for joining the show. So, all right, where are we at time-wise? We're, we're, we're way ahead of schedule. Yeah, we had a, a big discussion over uh, what questions to ask, what order do we ask them, um, what can we put down for responses, all that kind of thing to make it very more accurate and maybe more uh, friendly to uh, GBOT people. Right, and... Did you get a lot of pushback when you were first doing this, or were people like, "Yeah, that's a good idea"? Um, I did get some pushback from them. Yeah, yeah. it's like there's only men and women. Anything else is a pathology. 
I'm like, no, no. it's not. No. There are also various variations, like having red hair or black hair or you know blonde or whatever, or you know light skin or dark skin, being tall or short. It's not really right. a pathology. A lot of it is just a variation, a natural That's variation. Absolutely that. Yeah, so. and when the mind does nothing wrong with my penis, it worked. Yeah, I could pee. And of course, at that young age, I just wore diapers, so we didn't make any difference where it came out. No one's going to see it. That absolutely that. Why do you? Why do they care? Oh. <laughs> exactly. Why should they? You know, why should they care exactly where it came out? It comes out. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's a big what thing. Matters. It actually works. Yes, and as long as it comes out, then you don't really need surgery until you're ready, do you? Yeah, exactly. I may decide to keep it, not keep, you know. Take it off, whatever, but that's up to the individual. It's not up to the doctor. Right. The person's um the person's right to say, okay, this is too short, this is too long, keep this thing, you know, whatever. It's only it's their choice only to figure out if it's nice, if it's good for them. Right. And that we uh hey, there's your little thing. It's kind of small. But um can you make that a bigger flash? Maybe. But we got the document up there, and I'm going to get really close to the camera so I can read it. Um, but it says the legal sex is X and gender identity is other. Um, that I liked. Um, sex assigned at birth, not recorded on birth certificate. That's not exactly correct, is it? It is not correct, no. Okay. Uh, sex that recorded at birth is X. They right. didn't know exactly what it was. And I'm intersex. I'm X. Yes. That's where, you know, that's what my doctor said, and, and that's where it is. Yes, they uh, lied about me. They didn't put anything until after surgery. <laughs> yeah. um, and my parents had to get divorced before surgery because they didn't agree. And uh, so it was a good time. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, here's, a, here's a question for you. What do you think is the youngest? How old is the youngest person to have a sex change? Like uh, sex change by choice or uh, sex change at infant? As an infant. A pretty much at infant. I so, know two boys who had um, micro Yeah. Uh, who had sex change to girls at two days old. Yeah. The and that was what 1960 something 1950 something i mean something like that they um i know the parents i know them very well i see them each year at the conferences mm -hmm. and yeah they're like 12 now i think they are one um one of them is very feminine the other one looks like a tomboy yeah. so we're not quite sure but the parents um who adopted them uh mm -hmm. then then you know, then, then figure that out. That's good. Yeah. All right. So we have a question from a guest. So I'm going to interrupt you. Um, this question is for you, and it's from Cynthia Jackson Multi. And it says, given all of your experience, um, lack of support and building and bullying and surgeries, sorry, I really do know how to read. Um, <laughs> Have, have you developed any special skills or superpowers so um, that help you manage the harsh and ignorant world that makes your life so darn difficult to be an intersex person? Uh, growing up, I used to love to see, um, you know, the superheroes, Superman, Batman, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the two I liked most was, and I could identify with, is Batman and Iron Man. Uh -huh. They're just... They're just humans, you know, no special, you know, abilities, but they are very smart. Yeah. And they invented, you know, the bat suit and mm -hmm. Iron Man invented the, the armor that he wears. Mm -hmm. And I, have, unlike them now, I have a super skill as they have. Not super power, but super skill. Uh, growing up, I, well, I studied men. I studied women. Um how they move, how they walk, uh, yeah. words they use, voice inflections, all that kind of stuff. Everything, you know, what they wear, you know. And so now, I did that also to figure out 
who was I? Where was I? Was I a boy? Right. Was it more like a girl? Do I like boy things more? Do I like girl things more? So yeah. now, I've been studying them and I'm just trying to understand them. I can pass as a man wearing a dress. I can pass for a woman wearing a, you know, a men's suit, coat and tie. The main difference what I'm wearing, I can be either one because I am both. Yep, I feel I'm you not there. I'm to be a woman. I am a woman. I'm not, I'm not pretending to be a guy. I am a guy. That, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, depends on the day, and, and sometimes being a guy is utilitarian and helpful. Um, yeah. Don't want to start any arguments there. So, <laughs> but I want to thank Cynthia for the question before we move on. And, and I uh, am. Um, I am a peer support specialist, so I can actually help people who are intersex or trans to transition because I can understand where they are because I've been I've been there, I've been through it. Yes, that helps. And, and um, get that. I don't know if you're seeing uh, the the movie Victor Victoria by Judy Andrews. Oh yeah, long time ago, but yep. <laughs> like I said, my birth name is Victoria. Yeah. Then I changed my name to Victor at eight months old, where I get Vicky from. Yeah, and yep. what she did in the movie, I did in real life. Right. I did a. I was raised a male, but I also do a lot of drag king performances. Yeah, yep. all over the place. And the last That's one I did was in London, at a Soho nightclub called She S H E. So let's be a nightclub. Let's be a bar. There you go. I did a drag Soho. king performance oh. there. That's interesting. So it was, it's been a while, then you're saying. Uh. Oh, yeah. That was back, the last, yeah, that show I did is uh, 2017. Oh, that's not that long ago then. Five years ago now, yeah. So, and uh, that's awesome, though. Let's see, we got uh, Greg mentioned the uh, shout out here in the DSD is take, taking over the term intersex. And he hopes that that's not true. I hope that's not true as well, that the term of DSD is taking over intersex. Um, it's not in the intersex community so much, but it certainly is in the medical world. So In the uh, medical world, it's um, still DSD, a difference. Of, uh, we call it a difference, though, a sex development, not a disorder like the, like the doctors do. Yeah, but the parents always ask them, is, is being intersex, like, will that make them gay? I don't want my kid being gay. So no, you know, and it's being intersex for not turning your child gay or lesbian or anything. Well, like I say, that since I'm not male or female, oh, that you. can't really be gay either way, <laughs> or, exactly, or I'm yeah. gay every way. It's, take your pick. <laughs> it's either all gay or none of it's gay. So it's yeah. You know, the good thing works is, I you. can I can be in a um, like I was in the nightclub bar with all the butch dyke lesbians. I am one, so I just fit right in. There you go. <laughs> um, I get I fit into trans groups. I go to a lot of trans groups because there's no intersex groups around here. So I go into trans groups and I'm just one of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been in I've done workshops with uh, men's workshops and I'm just one of the guys. I've yeah. been to women's conferences, women's um, workshops, and I'm just one of the women. I can fit into all of that. Because I am all of that. That's awesome. Um, not necessarily a chameleon, but um, it's also somewhat of a sad statement to humanity that most of it is all you got to do is change your clothes and you know maybe your posture a little bit. Um, I find out that I'm rather feminine when I'm totally relaxed and I'm very masculine when I'm not relaxed and, um, but that you can switch back and forth based on your clothing more than anything. Right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I just changed my mannerisms, changed my voice. So I become that. 
That that's he, he was a she and she said, Hey babe, take a walk on the wild side. <laughs> I don't know if you heard Jim or not, but yeah. I did. <laughs> um, I don't do it to um impersonate or try to, you know, you know, say, you know, you know, be false or lie to people. It's like, no, I'm not lying. I'm not trying to, you know, get into somewhere where I'm not. Yep. Um, I'm just one of them. Exactly. And yeah, I don't feel like I'm pretending ever, um, regardless of what I'm wearing. And um, it's just me. <laughs> And so, there was a big battle uh, in my head. Be a boy, be a girl, be a boy, be a girl. I'm like, no, nah, I can't pick. I am both. Oh, and, and, and it could change from minute to minute, not day to day or hour to hour. To me now, it's all integrated through me. Um, masculine, feminine, male, female, man, woman. Um, it's all integrated into one. Yeah, I feel you there. I when I first found out that um, I was born with the genitals of both, I thought that I needed to be a female, and so I spent some time trying to be a female, and um, it did good. People called me ma'am and everything. I passed to some degree, and um, but after a couple of years of that, it's like. You know, as much as this is me, it's not all of me. So um, that's how I count with my name because I had to pay homage to the person that got me to that point in my life because they went through hell. Um, <laughs> and um, but I I decided that I wasn't male or female and that I was both and that I don't have to try to be feminine. I don't have to try to be male. Just be me, and people are going to see it. One, Some people are going to see it as feminine. Some people are going to see it as masculine. Just be myself and quit trying to be one or the other. And it was the most liberating, relaxing thing that ever happened in my entire life. Yeah. Here, I am just me. Some people think I'm a butch dyke lesbian, uh, which is close. Some people see me as very femme, especially if I dress up real nice like this and do my nails, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, people see me as they see me. Some people at work call me ma'am. Some people, you know, the customers come in, they, you know, a couple of them call me sir. It's like, okay, whatever, that's what you see. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with it because they're both right. So, yep. Um, all right. Greg didn't catch the beginning of the show, I don't think, and would like to know what your intersex variation is. Um, my intersex variation is partial androgen insensitivity syndrome. There you go. Which caused the hype it's called my hypospadias. Yeah, and my diagnosis at the time that I was born was the extreme hypospadias with micro penis. Oh, okay. So um Anyway, all right, so now I want to move on because you have done so many amazing things that we could like make a two hour show. And I want to make sure we at least get the things we planned on getting in there. The um, good thing is, with the superpower, I use it to help others, to help them out with their journeys. Yeah. Like I so helped Kay out with her and her kid. You know, it's me, him and his kid. I yeah. help them out. Yeah, so you are not a superhero, but you are a human that does super things. Yes. So I, I use these powers to help others. To help there people, you go. You know. So you um, collaborated with co author? I don't know. You have a book or part of a book or involved with the book. And I am in five different books that other people wrote about me. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a specific one today. Half from it's uh, half from a diet, half. Oh my lord, hermaphrodites. Thank you, hermaphrodites, the transgender spirituality workbook, and it is by um, Raven Caldera. Yeah, hopefully, I said that properly. And guess what? I got that, I got one, and I just started reading it. Um, so I've got a lot of reading through. It's a rather hefty book. And I actually got two books 
one one day and one the other. And <laughs> so um, I started reading that one first. Um, but it's a very interesting book. Um, first of all, can you clarify for me what your involvement is with the book? Uh, Raven started going around to, to various people to find out, talking about all the various hermaphroditical gods. Right. Because every culture has one. Right. Whether it's Hindu, Judaism, Christianity, they all have this hermaphrodite god of all various kinds. So we have existed throughout history. Yes. In yeah. every culture and every time period. Uh -huh. We are here. Yeah, we are. And he is pagan, a great pagan author, wrote like 30 different books on various paganism, on homesteading, on quilting, or quilting, all kinds of stuff. Right. But he didn't know about Christianity. Uh -huh. So he knew all about the other pagan gods. Right. And there's a whole bunch of article, a whole bunch of stories from all different people all over the place who are either trans or intersex about various deities. Right. But he didn't know anything about Christianity. And I do. Surprise. So they didn't because it gets shoved down everybody's throat. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I wrote the uh, Christian chapter of that book. Oh, okay. I talked about all the various um, things in the Bible that talk about um, talk about hermaphrodites. Yeah. Or well, back then they were called eunuchs. Right, which still isn't the appropriate word that Jesus would have used back then because he obviously spoke biblical Aramaic and not mm -hmm. English. And so, um, yeah, since you brought it up, I always bring up Matthew nineteen twelve. Yeah. Um, where some are born that way, some are made that way by, by man, and um, some choose to be that way to the glory oh, of the kingdom. God. Yes. And um, so just the fact that it says some are born that way, it's not what everybody traditional thinks as a eunuch, whereas it's a castrated male because I don't think they can castrate a male before they're born today, much less 2,000 years ago. Basically, I am uh, born of the mother's womb. Yeah. In other words, my testicles did not drop. Yeah. So I never really had them on the outside. They stayed put and, well, they became, uh, well, they were um, over testes. It was a part ovarian, part testicular tissue. But in the Bible, yeah, they never dropped. So I didn't, never had testicles, never had balls. Right. So I'm born of the mother's womb. But there also, one great thing about it, that I read is um, Isaiah 56, three to five. Do mm -hmm. not let the eunuch tell you that he's just a dry tree. You know, he's gonna have kids. Yeah. That says a lot. Those who obey me, those who follow the Sabbath, there is a name and a monument better than sons and daughters, an everlasting name that will never be cut off. Yes, and be held up above male and female. Yes. Yes, I'm familiar with that. And, uh, yeah, I find it quite um, amazing how many churches don't ever seem to be able to read that. No, they don't read that part, no. So I'm they trying to spread a the lot word. Of things in there from what it was. Yes, that's like why it. I recommend everybody read the Bible for yourself, even if you don't believe in Christianity, because it's the oldest historical archive that we have available to the common person and if you actually read it and don't let somebody else tell you what's in it you'll be amazed at how well accepted you are exactly uh, actually native american people around here have us correct when they find someone like this it's a gift oh we have a special person here um Dad. They love us and they usually make us into like shaman because we can understand the minds of men and women far deeper than only than any single sex person can. Yeah, absolutely. I use that in my writing, being able to um, emotionally feel both sides of the equation and be able to, to put things coherently that are effective for everybody. <laughs> Exactly. That's one of the ones I do. I do a talk on intersex throughout various religions and cultures, and I bring this I bring this point up for that. A lot of Amer Native Americans see us like that. 
and I'm part Mi'kmaq myself. And when I've gone to various Native American, you know, events, uh, that's my job pretty much. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty much like a marriage counselor, even though I have a license, you know. And it, you know but it doesn't pay job. very well, though, does it? It pretty much could be. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, I'm not a peer support specialist, so I can understand. And then I helped out some, you know, a couple of friends of mine who are, you know, they're married and they have some, they're trying to figure out what to do. And I could see her side of it. And I helped her with all the various emotions that they go through. I talked with a guy and then they're saying where he was coming from. Right. And so I can see it from to, both sides. Yeah. And hopefully get them to meet somewhere in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. And or realize how wrong they are. <laughs> I explained her to him and him to her. There you go. Yeah. And that's awesome. That's got to be extremely helpful. And, uh, but yes, I have always said that intersex people possess, um, a little bit more insight into the universe than the average person. Um, and I've met a lot of intersex people that have very high IQs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm always interested in that. I started asking people for a while and I found a lot of intersex people um, that had very high IQs. And they have been treated either very poorly by society or had to deny their actual selves so much during their lives that they don't realize how intelligent they are because nobody would give them the opportunity. Exactly. And so um, I hope if there's an intersex person here that feels that they're smart, but nobody's ever told them they are, that they realize that they are and the other people haven't told you that because they are not. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry about that. All right, so you are doing classes and trainings and things of that nature, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, if somebody wanted to take your class or have you do a training, um, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, right now, you can get call me through Facebook. Uh -huh. send, me a, send me a message on that. Okay. Uh, um, they can send, send me an email if they wish. All right. And what would that email address be? Um, N E I C four. The number four that is E. And there was New England in the sense campaign for equality, just the initials, at covenantly.com. At what.com? Um, currently. Current leaf? Yeah, I see um, um, okay. AT&T uh, email address. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody gets it clear. I thought we were putting that up, but apparently I missed it. Sorry. That would probably be my fault. Sorry. You can always shoot me a <laughs> message through Facebook if you like. Yeah. So, all right. We are running a little bit short on time but or long on time i don't know anyway um we're only got a few more minutes left here um and i was wondering if there was anything that you wanted to um let everybody know that we haven't already covered as far as either accepting intersex because hopefully non-intersex people are watching this show but if there's something that you think the intersex community really needs to know that we haven't talked about already um have the doctors actually listen to you um seeing that these intersex variations are just that there are variations like having blonde hair or you know or being taller or shorter or having darker skin or lighter skin um to actually let them figure out who they are you know, um, give them dolls, give them, you know, blocks, whatever. Let them find out if they are more masculine, more feminine. They want to be more on the girl or boy because you can't choose your gender. You discover it. You can't, yeah. choose, you can't choose your orientation. You just discover it. Yes. And um, 
that's just it. It's like your your sex is your biology, and that and your gender is something that only you can decide, and it's only decided through personal discovery of what makes you happy. Yeah. Yes, I didn't. I can't, I didn't choose my orientation. I didn't choose my gender. I discovered it and just went with it. There you go. All right, I so we do have a question. Just, I just am. Right. There you go. We have a question from the audience. And first of all, um, hello, Juliana, for showing up. We're glad you were there. But um, Cynthia wanted to know, because I asked you in the beginning and we're not sure if you answered it, oh. <laughs> did um, growing up intersex make you a bitter adult at some point in your life? Um, it did for a long time. Yes, I was quite bitter at the doctors for cutting me up, yeah. being butchers, to try to force me to do one thing or the other. They didn't help me at all growing up. They hurt me. Yeah, they did. I wanted my I went to doctor in jail for assault and battery was a deadly weapon. That Literally. would be nice. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> that did my surgeries is already dead, so I don't have that option. Otherwise, I might have been dead long ago. I'd probably um, be in jail too if they so were. Yes, alive. I was very bitter about it. Yeah. But now I'm considering it's like, you know, why should I be bitter? It's like they did with that thing. I can't change it. I can always begin right now and make a better future out of it. Right. So instead of being more bitter towards them, I am more helpful. I'm more yeah. empathetic to other people who are intersex, who are trans. Yeah, I can, um, I can help understand them. And instead of being bitter, you know, at the doctors and like, okay, we need to, you know, change their their views on it. There you go. And try to get them to understand us. Ignorance yeah. is ignorance. That can be fixed by education. Right. By saying, hey, we're here. Yeah. You know, by having intersex awareness day. To yeah. show awareness. By existing. Like, Oh, <laughs> and Juliana wants to let you know she loves your attitude. It's a great attitude. Thank you. And um, Greg would like to know um, how you handle pronouns and when people mispronoun you. <laughs> um, well, mis people mispronoun me. It's like, okay, they see a male power in me, so they call me her, not him. Oh, they see the female power in me and they call me ma'am. You know, I'm yeah. not going to correct them because they're both right, pretty much. <laughs> That's my attitude. Um, all pronouns apply. So it doesn't matter what one you use as long as you're being nice. And if you're not being nice, you will never be correct. Oh. <laughs> and San, me and Sandy are trying to figure out a good neutral pronoun for us. Sandy was my, my late wife, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, I love her to bits. But we came out to be, you take him and her Stripped them together and came out with Herm, H E R M. There you go. I like that. I call myself a hermaphrodite because I a lot of people are scientifically to, apply. I like to be a short for hermaphrodite, so I kind of <coughs> dropped that myself. So right, I'm trying. We're trying to start to find a very good neutral pronoun. There you and go. Don't forget. Don't forget to tell them. And Jim, uh, <laughs> which is. A lovely, very lovely intersex person who I'm living with. Uh, came out with Vo. Ve va vo. There you go. And so I've been trying to, think about to that use that. That actually works. <laughs> there you go. Don't forget to tell them what October 26th oh, yes. celebrates. It's not just Intersex Awareness Day. The, it's, it's a little personal. late for all that because right now we are at the very end of the show. And I am going to thank you so much for being our guest today. You made the show very interesting. And uh, Jim, thanks for joining our show and talking about Interwear, Intersex Awareness Day. And which is on Jay. October 26th, Did I just call you Jim? which is my birthday. <laughs> there you go. I yes, honored, that I was aware of. I picking my birthday to be Intersex Awareness Day. All right. Hey, thank you Keep very much. The word. Have a great day. Yes. Thanks for being on the show. And we will see you all on the second Saturday of next month.